Hi, Trinity. Um, I get the privilege of reading a story for you this year. It's called The Christmas Ministry. This is a story that we read to our kids as they were growing up. We got it from the Edmonton Public Library, and one year we couldn't get it, so we actually had to buy our own copy, and we're really glad we did. We read this book for years and years and years. There are 24 chapters, and so each day of December, we would read another chapter, and I would love to read it to you this year. And so, as there are 24 chapters, <laughs> there's one for each day, and so the very first chapter is the 1st of December. This is a story that's going to take us 2,000 years to get through, and it's a lot of fun. So, I'm going to read you the first chapter, the 1st of December. Perhaps the clock hands had become so tired of going in the same direction year after year that they had suddenly begun to go the opposite way instead. And so it starts. <clears throat> Dusk was falling. The lights were on in the Christmas streets. Thick snowflakes were dancing between the lamps. The streets were crowded with people. Among all these busy persons were Papa and Joya Kim, who had gone into town to buy an advent calendar. It was their last chance, because tomorrow would be the 1st of December. They were sold out at the newsstand and in the big bookstore at the market. Joya Kim tugged his father's hand hard and pointed at a tiny shop window where a brightly colored advent calendar was leaning against a pile of books. There, he said. Papa turned back. Ah, saved. They went into the little bookshop that Joya Kim thought looked old and worn out. Books stood tightly packed on shelves along all the walls from floor to ceiling, all of them different. A large pile of advent calendars lay on the counter. There were two kinds. One with a picture of Santa Claus with a sled and reindeer, and the other with a picture of a barn with a tiny little elf eating porridge out of a big bowl. Papa held up the two calendars. There are plastic figures in this one and chocolate ones in that, he said, but the dentist won't be too happy about that. Joya Kim examined the two calendars. He didn't know which one he wanted. <laughs> ah, it was different when I was a boy, continued Papa. How do you mean? Ah, then there was only a tiny picture behind each door, one for each day. But it was exciting every morning, trying to guess what the picture would be. Then we opened it. Well, we opened it, you see. It was like opening the door to a different world. Joya Kim had noticed something. He pointed to one of the walls of books. There's an advent calendar over there too. He ran over to fetch it and held it up to show Papa. It had a picture of Joseph and Mary bending over the baby Jesus in the manger. The three wise men from the east were kneeling in the background. Outside the stable were the shepherds with their sheep and angels floating down from the sky. One of them was blowing a trumpet. The colors of the calendar were faded as if it had been lying in the sun all summer. But the picture was so beautiful that Joya Kim almost felt sorry for it. I want this one, he said. Papa smiled. You know, I don't think that this one's for sale. I think it must be very old, maybe as old as I am. But Joya Kim would not give up. None of the doors are open, but it's only here on display. But I want it, Joya Kim said. I only want one that's like none of the others. The bookseller came up, a man with white hair. He looked surprised when he saw the advent calendar. Beautiful, he exclaimed. And genuine. Yes, original. It almost looks homemade. Ah, he wants to buy it, 
explained Papa, pointing at Joy Kim. I'm trying to explain that it's not for sale. The man raised his eyebrows. Did, did you find it here? I haven't seen one like that for years. It was in front of all those books, said Joya Kim. Ah, oh, must be old John up to his tricks again, said the bookseller. Papa stared at the man. John? Ah, yes, he's a strange character. He sells roses in the market. But where he gets them from, nobody knows. Sometimes he comes in and asks for a glass of water. In summer, when it's hot, he'll pour the last drops over his head before he goes out again. He's poured a few drops over me a couple of times, too. To thank me for the water, he sometimes leaves one or two roses on the counter. Or he'll put an old book on the shelf. Once, he put a photograph of a young woman in the window. It was from a country far away. Maybe that's where he comes from himself. Mm, Elizabeth, it said on the photo. And now he's left an advent calendar? Yes, evidently. There's something written on it, said Joya Kim. He read aloud, magic advent calendar, price 75 ore. The bookseller nodded. In that case, it must be very old. May I buy it for 75 ore? asked Joya Kim. The man laughed. I think you should have it for nothing. You'll see. Old John probably had you in mind. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, replied Joy Kim on his way out of the bookstore. Papa shook the bookseller's hand and followed Joy Kim out onto the pavement. Joy Kim hugged the calendar tight. I'll open it tomorrow, he said. Joya Kim kept walking up, kept waking up that night, thinking about the bookseller and John with his roses. Once he went to the bathroom and drank water right from the tap and thought of John pouring water over his head. Most of all, he thought about the magic advent calendar. It was as old as Papa, but all the same, nobody had opened any of the doors yet. Before he went to bed, he had found all the doors from 1 to 24. The 24th was, of course, Christmas Eve, and that door was four times bigger than the others, covering almost the whole of the manger in the stable. Where had the magic advent calendar been for over 40 years? And what would happen when he opened the first door? When he woke up again, it was seven o'clock. He reached up for the calendar, which was now hanging above his bed, to open the first door. His fingers were so impatient and nervous that it was difficult to get hold of it properly. At last, he managed to loosen a tiny corner of the door and it opened slowly. Joy Kim gazed into the picture of a toy shop. Among all the toys, and the people were a little lamb and a small girl. But he couldn't look at the picture in detail for just as he opened the door, something fell out onto his bed. He bent down and picked it up. It was a thin sheet of paper folded over and over again. When he had smoothed it out, he saw that there was writing on both sides. So he read what was on the paper. The lambkin. Elizabeth, her mother called after her. Come back, Elizabeth. Hey, isn't that the name? Isn't that the name the bookseller said was on the picture that John had left? We keep reading and find out. Elizabeth Hansen had been standing, staring at the big pile of teddy bears and furry animals while her mother was buying Christmas presents for the cousins who lived in Toten. All of a sudden, a little lamb shot out of the pile. It jumped onto the floor and looked around. It had a bell around its neck, and the bell started to jingle, in competition with all the cash registers. How could a toy suddenly come to life? Elizabeth was so surprised 
that she started to chase the lamb. It was running across the wide floor of the department store in the direction of the moving staircase. We call those escalators, don't we? Lambkin! Lambkin! she called after it. The lamb was already on the staircase, which was moving down to the floor below. The stairs moved quite quickly, and the lamb sprang even quicker, so that Elizabeth had to run faster than the stairs and the lamb together if she was going to catch up with it. Come back, Elizabeth, repeated her mother severely. But Elizabeth had already jumped onto the staircase. She could see the lamb running through the ground floor where they sold underwear and ties. As soon as she had solid feet beneath her feet again, she went the same way as the lamb. It had managed to bound out onto the street where the snowflakes were dancing among the chains of Christmas lights hanging above the street. Elizabeth knocked over a stand of winter gloves and followed it. Out in the noisy street, she could barely hear the bell jingling, but Elizabeth did not give up. She was determined to stroke the lamb's soft fleece. Lambkin! Lambkin! The lamb sprang across the road against the red light. Perhaps it thought a red man meant go and a green man meant stop. Elizabeth thought she had heard that all sheep were colorblind. At any rate, the lamb didn't stop so Elizabeth couldn't stop either. She was going to catch up with the lamb even if she had to follow it to the ends of the earth. The cars tooted their horns and a motorbike had to swerve on to the pavement to avoid colliding with Elizabeth or the lamb. The people during their Christmas shopping all stared. They didn't often see a little girl running across the road after a lamb. In any case, It was strange to be running after a lamb in the middle of winter. As they ran, Elizabeth heard the church clock striking three. She noticed it specially because she knew she had come to town on the five o'clock bus. Perhaps the hands had become so tired of going in the same direction year after year that they had suddenly begun to go the opposite way instead. Elizabeth thought that clocks, too, might get bored with doing the same thing all the time. But there was something else as well. When Elizabeth had gone into the department store, it had been almost completely dark. Now it was suddenly light again. And that was curious, because there had been no night in between. As soon as the lamb had a chance, it found a road leading out of town and trotted on towards a small wood. It sprang onto a path between tall pine trees. Now the lamb had to slow down a little, for the path was covered with all the snow that had been falling during the past few days. Elizabeth went after it. It was difficult for her to run now too, but the lamb had four legs which were dragging in the snow while she only had two. Perhaps that would help her to gain on it. Her mother's cries had been drowned long ago by the noise in the street. Soon she couldn't even hear street sounds, but something was still singing in her ears. Shall we buy this one or both of them? What do you think, Elizabeth? Perhaps the reason the lamb had come to life and run away from the big store was that it could no longer bear to listen to the cash registers and the talk about buying and selling. And perhaps that was why Elizabeth was following it. She had never enjoyed shopping either. Joya Kim looked up from the sheet of paper that had fallen out of the magic advent calendar. What he had read was so amazing. He had always liked secrets. Now he remembered the little box with the key in it, the one Grandma had bought him in Poland. 
Mama and Papa had made him a solemn promise that they would never look for the key and open the box when Joya Kim was asleep or at school. It would have been as bad as opening someone else's letters, they had said. Up to now, Joya Kim hadn't any real secrets to hide in the box, but now he put the paper from the advent calendar there, turned the key, and hid it under his pillow. So when Mama and Papa woke up and came to look at the advent calendar too, they only saw the picture of the lamb in the department store. Do you remember? asked Mama, looking up at Papa. It was just like that when we were small. <laughs> Papa nodded. Then we could use our imagination on the little picture and make up the rest ourselves. It was much better than those plastic figures that end up being swallowed by a vacuum cleaner. Something was laughing inside Joya Kim. Only he knew that there had been a mysterious piece of paper inside the calendar. He pointed at the picture of the lamb. The lamb has decided to run away from the shop, he said because it can't bear listening to the cash registers and the talk of buying and selling anymore. But there's a little girl called Elizabeth in the shop, and she began ran running after the lamb because she wants to stroke it. Ho, oh, ho, isn't that just what I said, said Papa. What does the boy want with plastic figures? For the rest of the day, Joya Kim wondered whether Elizabeth would catch up with the lamb so that she could stroke its fleece. Would he find out tomorrow? For then, there'd surely be another little piece of paper. Wouldn't there? And that's the end of the first day of December. Tomorrow, I'll read you the second chapter, which will be called probably the second of December. Have a really good day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, y'all.